Star Citizen hit the public awareness in October of 2012. I remember it very clearly. The reason? Well, I'm a huge fan of space games, and like many people, the space game drought between 2000 and 2012 hit really hard. This was the perfect time then to announce a new game, not only set in space, but brought to us by one of the legendary creators of the genre. At the time though, I don't think anyone could have estimated the game's future crowdfunding success. So 2012 was a very strange year for gaming, and this is a fact that's easy to forget, and when it's not forgotten, it is instead overlooked or understated. But what made 2012 a standout year? Well, it was the year of Kickstarter. It was the year that developers took to crowdfunding, and shockingly, well, crowdfunding became an instant hit. It's more than possible that Star Citizen's crowdfunding campaign wouldn't have been a success had it been attempted either before or after 2012. After all, that year was significant as the foundations for the road to riches that had been laid by others. Let's then take a step into recent history. February of 2012. Kickstarter, a relatively little-known crowdfunding platform, at least in video game circles, a legendary game designer from the past, and a sprinkling of nostalgia. This was a recipe for a million dollar success. Enter game studio Double Fine Productions, creators of the critically acclaimed Psychonauts and Brutal Legends, two games which found a dedicated and passionate audience, but two games which nonetheless financially underperformed. As a studio, Double Fine had a heritage for adventure games, a hugely successful genre born in a previous decade. Before founding Double Fine, CEO Tim Schafer worked at LucasArts and was responsible for some of the most recognisable games of the 90s. Most notable of these was the adventure game Monkey Island and its sequel. By 2012, adventure games were all but dead. There was a small, dedicated audience crying out for them. The perfect moment for Tim Schafer then to take to Kickstarter. Setting a goal of $300,000 for a brand new adventure game, the target was met in 9 hours. Within 24 hours, the project reached $1 million, and by the end of the 30-day crowdfunding campaign, the project hit $3.3 million. It was an unprecedented success, and one that opened the gates to dozens of other projects. Very quickly, many other dead titles came from the past and were resurrected. Wasteland 2, Pillars of Eternity, Shadowrun Returns, and many more, all hitting their crowdfunding targets or exceeding them. Virtuality even saw a comeback at this time, with Oculus being one of the most successful crowdfunding campaign projects ever. Now, it's important to remember, at least for video gaming, that at this time, the crowdfunding platform hadn't had the chance to prove its success or failure, as all the aforementioned projects were still in early development. By the time Chris Roberts appeared with Star Citizen at the end of 2012, crowdfunding was seen in the minds of gamers as the future. There was a huge amount of excitement about games developers finally having financial freedom. Tim Schafer and many other designers from the past, such as Chris Avalon and Brian Fargo, had, throughout 2012, all spoken on the merits of finally being free from publisher constraints. The groundwork for Star Citizen's success then had already been set. Chris Roberts bucked the Kickstarter trend, however, whether he knew the potential of what he had on his hands, we'll likely never know. But either way, Chris Roberts went straight for funding on his own website, and this is what they posted about Kickstarter. We love Kickstarter. We backed projects on this site and believe everyone in the development community owes a debt to Kickstarter for putting crowdfunding on the map and making it legitimate. But for us, the ultimate goal of crowdfunding is about connecting the crowd directly with the creators with as little friction as possible. By building a crowdfunding component directly into our site, we can ensure everyone who wants to back the game can. We provide multiple payment options to make sure that wherever in the world you are, there is an option that can work for you. It means you just have one destination to support the project, read updates, and most importantly, participate with other members of the community. All on a site that's designed around the game universe being created, providing the least friction possible. Kickstarter, as great as it is, can't deliver this experience, which is why we decided to go to it alone. Now, the crowdfunding project for Star Citizen then began on the Robert Space Industries website. The gold was $2 million, 
a target which many previous crowdfunding projects had proven was achievable. Roberts was adamant that $2 million would fund a fantastic space game, and a demo video for the game appeared to prove this. Within a week, Roberts also opened up an additional crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter, asking for a further $500,000. The project release date was set for November 2014, giving them two years to develop the game. And again, do keep in mind that as yet, none of the other crowdfunding projects of 2012 had hit their release date or hit any notable problems. November 2014 for release then seemed entirely reasonable and was in line with most other crowdfunding games that were funded at that particular time or that year. Now, seven years, one month and a few weeks later, the project has passed crowdfunding total of $250 million. A quarter of a billion dollars is a notable achievement for any project by any standards. Add the additional funds that CIG have received from private investors and loans, and the full total far exceeds $300 million. Currently, alpha version of 3.7 of Star Citizen is available for anyone to test it for free as a part of the free flight experience. Now say what you like about Star Citizen, but it's hard to deny that the crowdfunding campaign has been slick. The first days of the project were on the Roberts Space Industries website and were unlike any other crowdfunding project before it. This all had the hallmarks of an extremely professional, high-budget production. And the ships, of course, all looked fantastic and still do. The recent Citizen Con has showed that the game development is certainly progressing, and plenty of people who actively play the alpha game currently enjoy it. Meanwhile, many others look on wondering when or if the game will ever reach a final release date. Quite naturally, with the additional funds, the scope of the game has increased dramatically from what was originally envisioned back in 2012 and the original 2 million budget. Of course, many people will argue this is scope creep and the game has gone beyond what they originally backed, but other people will say that the game, well, is going to be unlike anything ever released. Either way, currently the 250 million milestone is being widely reported on within the game impress with varying degrees of seriousness. Whatever way you cut it, raising so much money is a significant achievement. It's also something that the BBC will be taking a look at in a few weeks on an episode of their upcoming TV show, BBC Click. The synopsis for the episode reads, Click investigates why there has been continued delays in bringing the $250 million crowdfunding video game Star Citizen from gameplay testing to market. The episode is due to air on the 14th of December. And for further takes on the $250 million milestone, do take a look at all the links in the video description. That then brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.